Okay, actually, <laughs> is uh, very handy. It's on xdebug.org. Uh, they hide a couple of the most valuable features at the very bottom of their docs page. Uh, you'll find yourself looking at the all configuration settings and all functions fairly often. Um, let me actually look at all functions right now. Okay. It would appear that it gives you no options. Oh, okay. There are a couple of settings. Yeah, at runtime. Thank you. Uh, there are no options. You can change them in your PHP INI or in your Apache vhost. Uh, HGDOS files. Take control controller that. So is that the display max children? Display max children, display max data, max depth. So you can Yes. Uh, And while we're here, while we're thinking about settings, let's have a look at the setting files that we've used to configure all of this. So there are a bunch of settings in here. Um, get the junk out of the way. There are very few that you actually need to configure to make things work. Uh, for profiling, you need a small suite. Uh, by default, it outputs, I believe, to the temp directory. Uh, I wanted to go to the specific directory, so I had to find it here. Uh, enable trigger uh, allows us to use the xdebug profile query string variable um, instead of making a dump out an xdebug file on every single load. Uh, that's a, a word of warning. If you turn on xdebug, uh, you can enable debugging by default with this profiler enable. Uh, and default enable flags if both of those set true. Uh, every single page load will result in an xdebug file. Um, that'll fill up your temp directory in a hurry, especially if you've got a pretty busy site or a WordPress blog. <laughs> uh, I also recommend uh, changing your cache grind file output name to something more useful like this. Uh, you can have a look in the docs at all the arguments that are available there, but this tells us um, the process, the Apache process ID, the host name that it was called, and uh, the full file name. Um, those things are all useful, especially if you've got a server where you've got multiple uh, V hosts running on it, um, and you want to keep all these grants straight. Uh, remote debugging is uh, also simple. A lot of these are actually the default values. The ones you really need to get the job going is remote enable, remote auto start, remote handler is the default uh, DBGP. Uh, remote mode is by default. Um, <clears throat> looks like everything else except for remote host is default values. Remote host is important because remember, Apache is calling out to your IDE. Your IDE opens up a port and acts like a server, so it's waiting for a call from your uh, web server. That means that if you enable uh, remote debugging, you can't have more than one person debugging on your server at a time unless you set up uh, V hosts or whatever with uh, different variables for uh, remote hosts and their VHP things. Make sense? And uh, that's, that's about it for configuration. But, but there's a lot of configuration flags for what it dumps out when there's an error. Because mm. uh -huh. I have like, lots of them turned up. Indeed. Uh, could you? So there's xdebug.dump dot, and you can tell it whether you want the environment to get the post cookies files. And it's set to equal star, and I don't remember what equal star means, other than it was not filter. There you go. Uh, again, all configuration settings is your resource for finding out exactly how to configure these things. There's quite a bit of options that can go into your PHP INI file. Um, and as demonstrated here, this is actually a really small taste of what's going on on the screen right now. All right. Uh, finally, other features that I haven't covered tonight. Uh, code coverage is actually pretty powerful. 
Um, code coverage uh, basically shows you uh, outputs an array of every line that was executed during processing. Um, it is not interesting or pretty to look at uh, as a person. That doesn't really say much to me. But automated tools can use this code coverage output here uh, to say tell you what lines were executed during a debug cycle, or most importantly, what lines were executed during uh, unit tests. So if you say write a batch of unit tests and you want to make sure that you've got most or the important parts of your section uh, of your code covered, you will use code coverage tools. And there's lots more information on uh, how to set up with code coverage here. Uh, and that is all I have on XD book. Do you have any other questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I, was, I guess I come from the cow world, so I'm a little bit spoiled as far as profiling options go. One thing I, I didn't notice you mentioned, and I'm not sure if XD world even has the capabilities to do memory usage profiling. Uh, it does have basic memory usage profiling. Uh, Perhaps not. I'm sure nowhere near as good as Java because we don't have the full VM available to us. Yeah, being able to know, well, you know, at any particular point in the execution, what's using the memory and you know what's, what's referencing what. I, I looked maybe half a year ago for mm -hmm. tools that let me do it, and I could not find anything. Uh, you're, except for the most rudimentary things like number of objects. Uh, your remote debugger will actually. Uh, it, it has the capability to tell you information like that when you're running in real time. So let's uh, uh, delete this cruft 